Welcome to our channel. Today, we bring you an important topic regarding the protection of our sovereignty. The Armed Forces of the Philippines continues to prioritize the defense of our Philippine exclusive economic zone. With our vast maritime territory, it is crucial that we reinforce our defenses to ensure the security and sovereignty of our nation. The Philippine exclusive economic zone is rich in resources, and it is our duty to safeguard and harness these for the benefit of our people. Through continuous training and modernization, our armed forces are ready to face any threat that may challenge our sovereignty. We have actively developed our naval capabilities, enhancing our surveillance and deterrent capabilities to maintain peace and stability in our maritime domain. We have increased our presence in strategic outposts, conducting regular patrols to detect and deter unauthorized activities in our waters. By intensifying our monitoring efforts, we can effectively address illegal fishing, smuggling, and any other activities that could undermine our economic and environmental interests. Aside from protecting our resources, our armed forces are also committed to ensuring the safety of our fishermen and the preservation of our marine environment. We actively collaborate with other nations to promote maritime security and uphold international law in our Philippine exclusive economic zone. Together, we stand firm in protecting our sovereignty and defending our rights. We call upon every Filipino to support our armed forces as we continue to reinforce our defenses in the Philippine exclusive economic zone. Let us remain united in safeguarding our territorial integrity and promoting the welfare of our people. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates on our country's security and defense. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest news and information. Together, let us protect and preserve our precious sovereignty. In this impactful video titled, Protecting Our Sovereignty, Armed Forces of the Philippines Reinforcing Defenses in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone, we delve into the proactive efforts of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to safeguard our nation's sovereignty in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone, EEZ. Through extensive strategic shifts in defense, we witness the dedication of our armed forces in ensuring the protection of our valuable resources and reinforcing our claims. As threats to our sovereignty persist, the armed forces of the Philippines has taken robust measures to strengthen our defenses. From the utilization of advanced technologies to the deployment of additional naval assets. This video showcases the comprehensive approach employed by our military forces in safeguarding our EEZ. These actions serve as a testament to our commitment to maintaining our rightful place in the international community. Furthermore, our armed forces play a crucial role in fostering regional stability and peace. By actively protecting our interests within the Philippine EEZ, we demonstrate to the world our dedication to responsible maritime governance. Our efforts are not only aimed at protecting our resources but also at ensuring a harmonious coexistence with neighboring nations. Join us in this enlightening visual journey as we witness the unwavering determination of the armed forces of the Philippines to safeguard our national rights and interests. Learn about the various defensive strategies implemented and the dedication of our military personnel in executing their duties with utmost professionalism. Stay informed about the proactive steps taken by the armed forces of the Philippines to protect our sovereignty and preserve the integrity of our Philippine exclusive economic zone. The Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, modernization program is now being reconfigured or shifted to provide the military with the capabilities needed to protect the country's exclusive economic zone, EZ, or 200 nautical miles from its coast. This shift is now undergoing in Horizon 3 of the AFP modernization program. Military Chief General Romeo Brauner Jr. confirmed in a recent media interview, Brauner said this reconfiguration, while still defensive in nature, was recommended by Department of National Defense, DND, Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. shortly after his appointment last June replacing then-Defense Senior Undersecretary Carlito Galvez Jr. who was reappointed as Presidential Peace Advisor. When the SND, Secretary of National Defense, came he saw Horizon 3 so he said we should revisit it and, re-Horizon, is his term, re-Horizon, when the SND came, he saw Horizon 3, so told us we should revisit it and re-horizon it, that was his term, re-horizon, so let's look at it, the original Horizon 3 was made prior to the events that happened with the water canonying, laser pointing and so on. It seems that his focus was territorial defense in depth, that's the old strategy, so we looked at it, the original Horizon 3 was made prior to the events that happened, the water canonying, laser pointing, and the like. 
his focus was like territorial defense in depth, that's the old strategy. Brauner was referring to the incidents where the Chinese tried to interfere with Philippine resupply efforts to its detachment aboard the BRP Sierra Madre which is keeping watch over Ayunjin Shoal in the West Philippine Sea, WPS, that, he said the original Horizon 3 was made with territorial defense in depth, in mind, meaning the military has to wait for threats to come near before engaging them and consists of first, second, third, and fourth line of defense. Popular economic wisdom has it that defense spending and economic growth do not go together. That an investment in the former will likely lead to deceleration in the other. Hence the usual view towards education, infrastructure, and even welfare as the rather good type of spending that will lead to economic growth. Indeed, there have been studies that seem to bolster that school of thought. One of the earliest papers on such done in the Philippines was written by Fredrickson and La Chivita, 1987 which declared that causality runs from economic growth to defense spending and not the other way around. Several similar papers, such as Degger and Sen's, 1989, study saw defense spending as decreasing or halting parts of a country's economy. While Azam, a 2020 study on low-income countries' defense budget, and Samson, a 2022 study on different income-level countries' approach towards defense and the economy, indicate that any positive relationship between defense spending and economic growth is, at best, weak, nonetheless, at least for substantially many of the studies made on the subject. What is notable is how such usually involve discussions on politically unstable low-income countries, many of these states coming from the Middle East and North Africa, whose defense spending is regarded as retarding economic growth due to the overly protracted conflicts within those areas. Azam, 2020, explains that, generally, it is believed that in the insecure region, each country deliberately allocates an uneven share of its meager economic resources to unproductive military expenditure. In the absenteeism of international collaboration to minimize political pressure, military expenditures can be driven more and more across a region as each country goes beyond its neighbors to safeguard its security, raise the level of regional military expenditure and bring little rise or even a decline in the security of all. The implications of defense expenditure on Philippine economic growth, sought to answer the question on how significant the relationship is between Philippine defense spending and its economic growth. By using a regression analysis of the Department of National Defense's, DND, budget vis a vis the country's GDP for a nearly 20-year period, from 2000 to 2019, it was found that for every 1% increase in defense expenditure there results an estimated increase of 0.12% in GDP, consequently, it may be more imperative for the Philippines to allow the Defense Department greater flexibility in terms of budget allocation due to its possible multidimensional effect, particularly the geopolitical, economic, social, and cultural dimensions of the Philippines. This, coincidentally, is similarly indicated in the aims pointed out in the National Security Policy of 2023-2028 and the Philippine Development Plan of 2023-2028. Investing in the defense sector should be seen more and more not merely as a purely national security matter but also as a positive catalyst in sustaining or facilitating the country's economic growth.